let's have a look at some largely unknown early flight sims released around 1984. Solo Flight is the first simulation by Microprose. This excellent developer will release many other successful titles during the decade that followed. But although the game is well known on machines, such as the Commodore 64, the particular version you see here isn't. This is an adaptation to the French Thompson system, whose series of MO slash TO machines was the most widespread in France at that time because of a big contract with the Ministry of Education, which equipped all schools with it, just like was the case for the BBC Micro in the UK. This version of Solo Flight has more pronounced colors and contrasts than the C64 version, and the controls are slightly smoother. Another flight sim called Airbus was released exclusively for the French machine. We can immediately remark the same color palette. Seven Thirty Seven Flight Simulator was released specifically for the MSX machines. All these games share few common features. First, the landing runway is pretty much the only 3D object. The landscape is empty apart from the static mountains looming in the distance for solo flight. Second, the frame rate is ridiculously low. It's sometimes long seconds between your control input and its results on screen. Third, sound effects are minimal. On the bright side, however, all of them provide a surprisingly realistic sensation of altitude, a most welcome feature in a flight sim, and quite an intriguing feature, even though all the rest is minimal, and with a rendering rate less than one frame per second, the impression of vertical speed is still there. That's an interesting aspect to mention, because it proves you don't need extra features to create the basic, but very real effect of controlling the altitude of your aircraft. Of course, it's always better to have many details, a realistic looking cockpit, airplane, and external environment. But they are not mandatory to create a rather realistic, even if basic, impression of flying. Between these early games where you have nothing, and the latest ones where you have everything, your own imagination makes the difference. It's the same kind of difference between reading a book or watching a movie. The magic of letters is that they can create universes as rich as the richest films, provided the reader has enough imagination. The early flight sims provide the letters. Let your mind do the rest. Finally, here's another simulation made exclusively for the MSX. This one is not about aircraft, but spaceship, a kind of early wing commander. Its most interesting aspects is energy management, which you need to constantly adjust between your engine, your laser beams, and your four shields. Each of these games has a little something, and that was actually enough to stick you for hours back in the day. We all know since Tetris that you don't need so much to make legendary games. Their beauty is their nakedness. The secret is not so much to appeal to the eye or ear, but to the mind. <laughs> 